Hi class, I am introducing you to Adobe Photoshop, but also Project One for Graphic Design Essentials. So uh, you should have a copy of this image uh, in your Project One folder, and uh, this image is in need of um, improving photo editing, right? Photoshop is a raster or pixel-oriented software uh, whereby we edit or modify um, or mask or temporarily change uh, the appearance of pixels in an image in order to improve that image. Uh, this image is in need of a lot of improvements. Some of them are required improvements. So as you are looking at this image and working on it, make sure you're referencing your Project One description uh, for tips on how to do this, but also so that you know uh, which corrections are required. Um, I am actually going to be editing this image slightly out of a different order um, than what you all will be doing, uh, only because there's a couple of things, if you do it in a different order, it's actually a little easier than the order that's in your project description. So, um, so don't panic if it looks like or it seems like when you're watching these screencasts, uh, don't panic if it seems like uh, I'm, I'm skipping a couple of steps and then coming back to um, some of those steps. So uh, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to use keyboard shortcut uh, that is normally found under the view pull down menu to fit this to screen so you can take a closer look at what I've got going on here. Uh, this is an image, by the way, this image, uh, this building still exists in Orlando. I think it's a state building or a government building or something um, uh, along I-4. That is actually I-4. Isn't it hideous? Um, and uh, you're actually going to be beautifying this image in a way um, that makes it possible for you to use it later this semester. So when you're done with Project One, do not delete your Project One files uh, out of anger or hatred or frustration, right? Keep them around because you're going to be taking the final flattened TIFF version of your beautiful new building and you're going to be using it um, as an image in your newsletter for Project Three later on this semester. Um, so, so don't delete this stuff. You're going to use it um, later on. Now, uh, this is from an original scanned photograph. Uh, what's so special about scanning in a photograph uh, versus something that's been printed previously and then scanned is that photographs are what's called continuous tone, meaning uh, there are no pixels in an, a real photograph because that image was created with light, not dots, not pixels, light, onto a surface that is uh, light sensitive um, meaning film, and then of course the photographic paper. Um, so if you have uh, something that is an original photo, like a real, real photo made from film, um, uh, and on real film paper uh, made in a dark room or by a machine that is in a dark room, um, uh, you are going to get a better quality scan or image from that to edit. Um, than if you were trying to scan something in that had previously been printed. Um, uh, printed meaning printed on a, a printer, uh, not a photograph. So uh, so this image, uh, some things you're going to be doing to this image. You're going to re uh, be replacing the sky with one of the sky images that I've provided you with. I'm giving you a choice there. Uh, you are going to be uh, improving the levels of gray in this image. Uh, you're going to make sure that this image is cropped, uh, that you're editing out obvious flaws removing that pole in the front, uh, adding some signage uh, to the building for the company prototype creativity institute. No, you cannot make up your own company name to put on this building. It has to be prototype creativity institute. Uh, you're welcome to shorten that and just call it prototype if you like. Um, so there's a lot of things uh, that, that we're going to be doing to beautify this image. Uh, and I'm going to take you through a series of screencasts that will get you there one by one. Uh, this one here, I'm going to start with uh, the most obvious thing. Now, if you were uh, meeting with me in a face-to-face -face class, or if you're reading this after classes have commenced face-to-face, -face, uh, you would be scanning this original photograph yourself uh, in our open lab. Uh, of course, you are still welcome to do that if you'd like. Um, if you are uh, planning on using our open labs, uh, you're welcome to ask a lab assistant on staff if you can uh, have that image so that you can scan it in yourself. Uh, but we've scanned it for you. Uh, we do not want to assume if you are taking this course virtually uh, that you are able to access our open labs or, or that you feel comfortable even doing that uh, during the pandemic. So we have scanned it in for you uh, and, uh, and we have scanned it in incorrectly for you uh, so that you can go through the motions of making sure that you correct uh, what is incorrect with the way that we've scanned it uh, for your original image. So I'm going to show you how to make those corrections really fast to your original 
uh, which includes uh, making sure that it's in the correct color model, the correct resolution, uh, and that it's named properly. Um, so, uh, so here we go. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save as. Uh, I'm going to give this file a name. Uh, as I save as. Uh, if you, uh, by the way, I'm going to save this on my computer, um, but if you um, do a save as, right, it gives you an opportunity to rename your file and to make sure that it is being saved in the correct file format, which it is. Uh, if I want to, it can be PSD or TIFF. Um, but, uh, but if I just hit save, it just saves over top of the current file I have open and does not allow me to open uh, to save it under a different name. So, uh, so I'm going to make sure I'm always doing save as uh, um, it, just to make sure I have the chance to, to correct these things. So uh, you can save it as a Photoshop or, right, you'll see it automatically gives me the extension PSD for Photoshop document. Um, as you're editing this image, PSD is fine. You know what? TIFF is okay too. If you want to stick with TIFF throughout this entire process, that's fine. Uh, it's what's more important uh, isn't that it's TIFF or PSD. Um, as you are improving this photo, uh, what's more important uh, is that you're paying attention to the naming uh, and to the layers within your file as you're doing this. So, uh, so I am going to go ahead and make it a PSD. Uh, PSD stands for Photoshop document. That, that is the native file format for Photoshop. So really you can only open this and edit it within Photoshop, not other uh, photo editing software uh, or raster software. So I'm going to give it a name. I don't know, something like last name, first initial, um, building uh, one. Uh, this is so I know that this is the first out of my three images that I'll be required to turn in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this on my desktop, but I'm going to go ahead and create, uh, using my Save As dialog box, a new folder uh, onto my desktop. And I'm going to call it something like, I don't know, last name, first initial, project one. And I'm going to make sure that all my correct images uh, are being stored, saved, and created on my desktop in this folder, all in the same place, so I don't have to go looking for things along the way. So uh, being organized and making sure you know where uh, you're saving your files is just as important as making sure you know what you're saving your files in terms of name and file format. So here's the folder that I created on my desktop. Uh, when I click Save, it's going to put it in this column here. This is column view. Uh, and it's going, to, uh, it's going to just save it right inside of that folder for me. Now that I have it saved, and you'll see the tab for my file, uh, has changed the name. I'm no longer working on that other file, uh, but I'm working on a second one now, and this is the second one that I'm going to be making these changes and corrections to that are required. So I'm going to go to the image pull-down menu. I'm going to go to image size, and you're going to see right here in this window uh, that it tells me uh, image size in terms of how much storage space it's taking up on my computer is 26.1 megabytes. That's nuts. I definitely don't need that, and I have a feeling I know why that is. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, change my width and height here to inches. This is just so that I know in my own head, in my own brain, uh, what the size of this image is in terms of what size it will print when I click the print button. So right now it's 11 by 7.7 .7 inches, uh, meaning it mm, just barely fits on an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper if I print it on that paper landscape when I go to print. So, um, so it'll just fit on a regular standard size, uh, letter size or eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. Uh, right here where it says resolution, it's referring to the number of pixels in every inch of this image. Uh, I do not need it to have 327.818 pixels per inch. Um, so uh, I'm actually going to reduce that resolution to something that is not redundant. Um, the magic number, uh, I actually call this the lazy man's number, but the magic number is 300. Um, if you want an even more magic number, uh, that number is based upon double what the line screen resolution is for whatever printing device you're printing onto. So if I was saving this image for a newspaper, because maybe it was going to be printed in the news, local newspaper, um, I would not want it to be uh, a resolution of 300. That's way too high, actually, um, because newspapers are generally printed at, at, uh, at 80, 85, 75, um, usually 80 uh, lines per inch in terms of the resolution. So I'd really only need this to be like 160 uh, DPI or dots per inch or PPI pixels per inch for my resolution. But, uh, but I'm going to keep the resolution high, uh, a little higher than what I normally would. Um, believe it or not, uh, most things that are printed are printed at a 133. 
line screen, meaning that the magic number of resolution uh, would be uh, double that, 266. Uh, most people don't really remember that number though. Um, so most of the time when you ask a printer or service bureau before you send your files off to have them professionally printed, those services will tell you, just make the resolution 300. Um, they know it's sufficient. When it prints, you're not going to be able to see pixels because you don't want anybody seeing your pixels. So, uh, so they just say 300. It's an easy number to remember. It's not excessively too much resolution. Uh, but just know that if you want the true magic number, it would actually be 266. I'm also going to make sure that this resample button is checked. If it's not, when I go to change the resolution and this button is not checked, it's actually going to modify the width and height of this image and I do not want to do that. Uh, so, uh, so that's all I need to do here under image size is to change the resolution but view things in inches so I know what the final print size is actually going to be. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that image pull down menu to mode and make sure this is in the correct color model. Right now is an RGB color, and the only time we want to use RGB color is if we're saving something that's meant to be viewed on a computer monitor or on some sort of uh, device, right? Device that uses red, green, and blue light. Yes, light is coming from that monitor. Uh, in order to create those colors, uh, red, green, and blue light uh, are the primary colors of light. Mix all three together, guess what you get? Pure white light. Um, uh, CMYK is actually the color model for print, and ultimately we know we're going to be printing this for a newsletter, so we're going to make sure that this is uh, in the proper color model, CMYK. Uh, CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, black. K is black, yeah? Um, we didn't want to use B because it could be mistaken for blue, right? Uh, so we use K for black, um, and uh, here's the thing. I don't need it to be CMYK either because look at this image. Do you see any color in it? no color. So why not just make it grayscale, yes, which is only using black dots to print one color, black, right? Um, and it significantly is going to reduce my file size uh, and it's also uh, going to ensure that there is no weird color cast or other colors uh, being used when this is printed. Uh, it will use only that color which is in the image, which would be black only uh, in order to print it. So um, Yes, I'm going to change this to grayscale. Uh, I'm also going to make sure it's 8 bits. 16-bit uh, is a non-editable. Uh, it is going to say, are you sure you want to get rid of your, um, uh, your color information? Yes, I do, because watch this. I'm going to go back to image and to image size again. And remember what size it was taking up on my, on my, my storage disk before, 20-some-odd megabytes, right? Now it's only 7.29 megabytes. Uh, way more reasonable. Uh, I don't have color that doesn't need to be there that's adding like 15 megabytes of storage space requirement to my disk um, for an image that doesn't even need color to begin with. So um, so I like what I have. I've got the correct color model. Uh, if I check um, my project description along the top of that, it says exactly what color model, how to name the file, what file format, uh, and it also uh, recommends uh, what resolution to use. So, uh, so I'm just making sure that this image is correct before I begin editing the image.